Good afternoon, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Back, and I'm here to tell you about one of your lessons called Quote Accurately. I'm going to read it to you, but it's also on the link that is above. And for those who are doing the packets, it's also this one right here. It says, when answering questions about the most important details and events and informational text, it's important to accurately quote text from the story. In addition to quoting text accurately to answer basic comprehension questions, you can also use specific details from the text to make inferences. When you make inferences, you use what you've read, in addition to what you already know to fill in the information that's not stated in the selection. You can use inferences to better understand the text and to answer questions about it. To make inferences, ask yourself what information is missing. Think about your own experiences that you've read or from previous texts, and then put it together to form a conclusion. Now, we've been doing this throughout the year. We've been quoting and we've been inferring. Remember what I always say, that first you state your answer in your own words, and then you quote from the text. That means putting quotes around the words that are not yours as backup, and then finally you're explaining how that quote relates to your answer. So let's give this a try. It says, during the American Revolution, a woman named Anna Smith Strong spied for the American patriots. She wanted to help defeat the British, but she had to be very careful. You see, Anna Smith Strong thought of a simple way to pass messages to the American patriots. She used her clothesline. Everyone had to hang out laundry to dry in the 1700s. Who would suspect that on her clothesline hung secret messages? There were six coves near where Strong lived. The Americans needed to know where a British ship was hiding. Strong used her laundry to signal in which cove the ship was hiding. She hung her black petticoat on one end of the line. Then she hung the correct number of creased white handkerchiefs to identify the proper code. Strong helped pass on important information, and she was never caught. The question that was asked was, explain Anna Strong Smith's method of passing messages to the American patriots. So based on that question, I would have to look in the text to give me some clues. Well, I know that in the third paragraph, it gives me information of what she did to send secret messages. So it says the Americans needed to know where a British ship was hiding. So Strong used her laundry to signal in which cove the ship was hiding. She hung her black petticoat at one of the line. Then she hung the correct number of creased white handkerchiefs to identify the proper cove. This means she used a clothesline to send messages and she had to be very careful in doing so. So as you can see, I stated my evidence and then I gave my inference to explain that evidence. Um, I could even take it a step further and say she had to do this each time and had to be careful of what she was doing. That way she would never get caught and she wasn't caught, but you never know if more messages came in. So I'm using my information from the text to form my conclusions or my inferences. And I quote the information that are not my words. So now it is your turn. So let's read the next text out loud, and then you will answer the questions that follow. It says, the fight for women's rights started with the fight to end slavery. Beginning in the 1820s, many women became active in the struggle for the abolition or end of slavery. One woman who worked hard to fight slavery was Lucretia Mott. In 1833, she started a women's anti-slavery society in Philadelphia. She went to London to attend the first world's anti-slavery convention. Women had to sit behind a curtain. They couldn't be seen or heard. Lucretia Moult was furious. Also attending the London convention was Elizabeth Cady Stanton. She too was angry at the limited role that women were allowed. Even though Mott was some 20 years older than Stanton, they became friends. The two friends began to talk with other women who were working to free the slaves. So they talked about how hard women's lives were. They talked about the need to make changes. They talked about how they might work together to fight for their own rights. Now it is your turn to answer the six questions below. 